This is Tom Mackey and today I'm talking about the best way to take protein to build muscle and to plan for longevity. We're talking about the mTOR receptor, how to coordinate your calories in order to maximize long lifespan. We're starting now. So this is a tricky topic. Protein is so well studied. The more protein you take in, to a reasonable extent, the more muscle mass you build. But at the same time, there are studies out there now, especially with mice, that show if we take too much protein and too much calories, we actually have a shorter lifespan. So we're gonna look at how to balance protein versus long life because of the mTOR receptor. Now, this is surprisingly well studied. There's a book called the China study out there. And in fact, somebody brought this up to me in medical school. And basically in these studies, when they heavily restricted the calorie on mice, those mice lived significantly longer. So if they restricted the diet on mice, they found that the health benefits increased and the mouse lived longer. But if they increased the diet too much, then the mouse did not live as long. They replicated this study on chimpanzees at a zoo. When they gave certain chimpanzees high calorie diets and others low calorie diets, the ones with the lower calorie diets actually lived longer on average. Does that mean if we eat more protein and more food, we're gonna live less? And this doesn't even count things like diabetes. We're not even talking about diabetes or metabolic issues. We're just saying, what if you're really thin versus someone who's normal sized? Let's consider me. I wouldn't consider myself obese, but I wouldn't consider myself super thin either. Does that mean if I was super thin, I would live longer on average? The results of all these mouse studies were crazy. If they restricted about 60% of the calories, the mouse would live like 50 to 60% longer. That blew my mind. Does that mean we should just stop eating and we could live significantly longer? What a medical breakthrough if true. This comes down to something called mTOR. This is called the mammalian target of rapamycin. Now rapamycin is a medication and it targets this regulator. Essentially mTOR is present inside cells and is a central regulator of cell growth and metabolism. And when we take in protein, protein activates mTOR. So it creates more protein, creates more muscle, but it can almost chew up our lifespan. If mTOR is not activated, that's been studied to show that potentially longer life may occur. mTOR plays a crucial role in protein synthesis and is significantly affected by protein intake. Here are some key points about mTOR and protein intake supported by various studies. Cell growth and aging. mTOR is a nutrient sensing kinase that regulates cell growth, protein synthesis, and autophagy. Autophagy means we self-eat bad or dying cells. As organisms age, changes in the regulation of the mTOR pathway can affect cellular and physiological functions, potentially contributing to the aging process. Caloric restriction and longevity. When we restrict our calories, in mice specifically, it has been shown to extend the lifespan in certain organisms such as mice. This effect is partially attributed to the down regulation of the mTOR pathway, which enhances cellular stress resistance and reduces the effects of aging. Autophagy and cellular maintenance. mTOR inhibition promotes autophagy, a process where the cell breaks down and recycles damaged components. Enhanced autophagy is associated with increased longevity and improved health span, as it helps maintain cellular integrity and function. Now, mTOR is activated by amino acids, which are found in protein, especially the amino acid leucine, which is abundant in high quality proteins like meat, dairy, legumes, like beans. Studies have shown that the amino acid availability directly influences mTOR activation, which in turn boosts protein synthesis in cells. mTOR is vital for protein synthesis. A high intake of protein signals mTOR to start building muscles in our body. But at the same time, activation of mTOR could reduce the amount of autophagy. So our body's not breaking down broken cells. It's more just building them up and keeping everything alive. Different diet patterns such as high protein diets, keto diets, and intermittent fasting can regulate mTOR activity. So for example, keto or intermittent fasting diets limit mTOR for certain parts of the day, so autophagy is performed, but in other times it supports muscle buildup. That's kind of the theory behind the 16 hour fast 
versus eight hours, making sure to get enough protein. Clinical implications. Understanding how mTOR differs from this protein is central to a lot of these diets. But let's get down to the human studies. Much of the research on mTOR and longevity has been conducted on animal or mouse models. Translating these findings to human is complex and requires more research. With the chimpanzees, this is the crazy part. When they first did the study, they pretty much gave them high sugar foods. So these chimpanzees that did not live a long time, they were essentially eating like as much candy as they wanted, as much processed food as they wanted. But they redid this study with high quality feed filled with protein, basically vegetables, and they actually found that the chimpanzees who ate more calories actually lived longer. This is closer to a human study. This is not a mouse study, but they actually found that the chimpanzees who ate more had more muscle mass, more strength, were less likely to get infections, and as a result, they lived longer. And that's kind of the trick, is these studies have not been performed in humans. We are not mice, we are not rats. These studies don't always translate. To prevent muscle loss and maintain resiliency, overall, it's been studied and shown in humans that it's essential to maximize muscle strength. There have been so many studies that looked at grip strength and people who had more grip strength later in life had a higher quality of life, were more functional and were less resistant to diseases. This is an excellent study that looked at almost 50,000 people and measured their grip strength, which is a great indicator for your overall muscle strength. So that's how hard you grip essentially on a grip strength device. But look at as you get past your 40s, over to your 60s, at your 60s, you basically start to go over the cliff. It's even worse for women. So as you get older and as you get over 65, your bone mass, your muscle mass go down. And one of the big secrets is if you can maintain your muscle mass and keep functional, it keeps everything going. It keeps your metabolism, your bone strength going. You're not gonna become a bodybuilder most likely if you're watching this video, but you will potentially have a greater chance of being more athletic, more fit, less nerve pain, less joint pain when you hit your later golden years. And that's the goal of this video. Here is where it gets even more exciting. They've determined that there is no change in metabolism if your muscle mass stays the same. That's insane to me. Your metabolic rate is predicted largely by your fat-free mass. So if you can keep your muscle up, theoretically your metabolism should stay up into your 80s, 90s. If you can maintain that muscle mass, then this has been shown to be the single number one predictor of high quality life in your golden years and older years. A high protein intake, and it's recommended to get 1.6 grams per kilogram or 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. This is optimal for muscle building, especially on a strength training plan. Many high quality studies estimate that about 1.6 grams per kilogram or about 0.8 grams per pound of body weight is what's needed. This is important for both weight loss and muscle gain. This is one of the most important nutrients you can get in your diet. The British Journal of Medicine and the American Preventative Journal looked at different studies and strength training with adequate protein intake was the single most important thing towards decreasing our mortality. That's the single one thing they found, more important than essentially anything else. The studies with strength training and exercise and proper protein intake, scientifically, this is the most proven thing. Fasting and weight loss are theoretical when it comes to mTOR. Yes, autophagy is proven in mice. With mTOR, when it's not activated, autophagy does occur and our cells kind of break down broken down cells and eat them. The beauty is for vegans, plant-based proteins can also meet protein requirements, but higher overall protein intake may be necessary due to lower leucine content in mTOR. And leucine is what activates mTOR. The total daily protein intake is more crucial than specific meal timing for muscle building. So as long as you get the protein, it doesn't matter what time of the day you get it, as long as you're getting it in. Large protein meals have a prolonged muscle building response, suggesting flexibility in protein timing. So the beauty is there's so many studies out 
it's shown that we can even digest large protein meals. When I was in biology class in high school, I remember our professor said, essentially, if you eat too much protein at once, you're wasting it, it leaves during your urine. That's probably not true. They've done studies that your body can be digesting that protein even 12 hours later, even if you take massive amounts. High protein intakes are generally safe for kidney and bone health, and there's a lack of scientific evidence linking them to adverse outcomes in healthy individuals. Now, when I watched Survivor, I remember there was an episode where a guy didn't eat for like 20 straight days, and then he won like a steak dinner, and he ate the steak dinner, and he got so sick that he couldn't use the bathroom, and they had to like med evac him. So just don't go crazy not eating for 20 days, and then going crazy and eating like 10 steaks, and you should be okay. But what it comes down to, and here's really the big secret. I remember last year, I fasted for an entire month, and I would go five days at a time not eating. I was bench pressing, I was deadlifting, I was lifting heavy weights, and I felt great while I was actually fasting, even on the fourth and the fifth day. But then towards the end of the month, my shoulders got sore, I couldn't lift, like I had to stop bench pressing, I had to stop squatting. At the end of the month, I was bench pressing 225 pounds, nine times. It took me six months to get back to 225 pounds again. That's me personally. I pretty much dropped off a cliff. I became extremely weak. Now, I'm not saying I'm a bodybuilder, but this is my experience with fasting. I did lose 30 pounds, but I lost so much muscle that I don't think it was worth it. There's a lot of popular weight loss medications right now, but this is what happens. It's said in some studies that 60 to 70% of the weight loss is lean muscle mass. And in an elderly patient, I'm talking 50s plus, you will have a very brutal time regaining that muscle. You will be weak, you will be stiff, and sometimes that's a lot worse. Yes, losing fat is amazing, but you have to gain muscle mass at the same time. So to be clear, if you are strength training and you are getting your adequate protein, you could still be losing weight while gaining muscle. That's the secret here. What I'm doing again this time is I'm strength training, I'm doing cardio, I'm doing it correctly because it's very important to maintain your muscle mass. Studies overall show that's important. You wanna get about one gram per pound or 1.6 grams per kilogram from my European watchers here. And unbelievably well proven, even though the China study does go over mice and restricting calorie intakes, I think a lot of these studies have not been verified in human models. And in humans, it has been unbelievably proven that the stronger and more physically active you are, that's the single best thing you could do towards a long lifespan. I really appreciate you guys. If I'm missing something, make sure to hit me up in the comments and tell me if I'm missing something here. This is the best data I've been able to find. I've read a lot of, lots of books on this subject. Let me know, I'd love to hear more.